ready now? Shall we? Yes, number we 11. shall. Number 11. Drew, I like your mug. Let's talk about your mug first. Well, this is a Starbucks mug. It's got a nice cork bottom, so it's quiet when I put it down. That is pretty classy. It's just got a pretty simple closed, open easy type scenario. Nice. Yeah, fairly easy to clean. The inside it's, of my contigo is disgusting. It's got like a brown film. Well, on see, see, here's the thing. I thought that... Are you serious? Yeah. This is my. Ew. This is this is one of my backup <laughs> mugs because, like, I was thinking, I'm like, you know, maybe the reason Brian's cool with the Contigo is because he has just a better degree of discipline in cleaning his mugs than I do. Yeah, definitely not. Okay. I leave it all day in all there, right. and then I like put some dish soap in there. So, of, so that's not the like case. Slosh then. it around. And then that's fine. No one will know. It's all right. I probably am catching some kind Everyone of disease from know. how. Little, anyway, <laughs> building up an immunity. Just bring on the criticism. Just go ahead. <laughs> bring it on. I'm a busy person. Calm down. Um, okay, Drew, we, so, got, we got a couple of cool things to talk about here. Yeah, today, um, today we're actually going to talk about my blazer. Um, yes. Brian, you know, told me to be you, prepared. And, yes. uh, we'll zoom in for the blazer. Yeah, this is, this is, and it's even yeah, brown. This is, uh, this is to, to date the only thing I've ever owned from Banana Republic. And honestly, it's not that great quality, to be honest. Stop. Um, I love it's really Banana not, Republic. It's really You're not. Done. It's really not. It's got a lot of fake pockets that don't do anything. So. I, can, I can honestly say I own 0% of my clothing is from Banana Republic. It's not, it's not my, not my store. Point zero one for me then. Wow, well, there you go. So, um, but anyway, it's, you joked about wearing the blazer yesterday because we wanted to talk about the Monograppa blazer. You were like, I should wear my blazer. I was like, you totally should. Let's both wear blazers. We didn't have a blazer. No, he didn't and think I would do you it. You really blocked the blazer. So, props to you, Drew. Um, uh, some folks want me to bring that, <coughs> that obnoxious 80s denim jacket. Oh, so. that's going to have to happen. Now yes, you brought it up again. We're going to we're gonna get more comments about it. So, anyway, yeah, that needs to happen. Um, let's talk about the blazer a little bit. So Monograppa came out with a pen uh, called the Fortuna, which they've had in several different variations. We've been carrying the Copper Mule for some time. So this is my personal Copper Mule, which has got a nice patina it on it. It kind of no longer looks copper. Right? It looks uh, nice, well-worn. I've never polished it, so I wanted to go with kind of a um, au naturel kind of look Right, to the it. cool thing about the Copper Mule is that if you compare this Copper Mule, what did you say, two years old on this one? Yeah, probably. Yeah, if you compare this Copper Mule with anyone else's two-year-old Copper Mule, they're all going to look very, very different. Oh, yeah. Just because of how they get used, where they get stored. You can like, it, see my fingerprints on it and stuff, because yeah. like, the hand oils get on there and the patinas. It really becomes your pen, which is it really does. neat to yeah. see. And you can polish it off and make it look nice. Uh, but they came out with a new pen called the Blazer. <laughs> Which is a fired pen. Golly, look at that similar, thing. Yeah, similar to can the Kuwaiko. Can I? Oh, do you want to like it? It's really tough to like capture this thing on video. So I found. No, um, that's cool. In picture. Is it coming across good? Okay, yeah. Cool. I was talking to Sarah and she was like, yeah, this one was a hard one to photograph. Uh, but it's a really cool pen. We put up a video on YouTube about how they do it. They basically just take a torch to it mm -hmm. and just burn the thing. Right. Can you spin and, and it, Brian? I can, Andy. There you go. Mm -hmm. Um, so how, it's not, how do they finish it after it's been burned? That's a great question, Drew, and I don't have an answer I for you. I think a lot of people are probably going to ask uh, that. Maybe, so I think I'm going to have to find that out now because of, you just brought it up. Um, so there's a couple of things noteworthy. It's a, it's, it's a premium pen, so it's not going to be for everybody. A lot of people are going to be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. How much is it? Because it's like $450. It's less. not cheap. So but another thing, like the Copper Mule, it's going to be a completely unique pen for you. The Copper Mule yeah. eventually becomes that very unique pen that only looks like your pen. This one's gonna start that way because if you look at a dozen of these, none of them look the same. They're all going true. to have a different pattern, different variety mm -hmm. of colors, and uh, it's gonna be unique, which is always a selling factor for me anyway. For sure, and it's slick. So like, I, I have a Lilyfoot Fire Blue uh, from Kaweco, mm -hmm. Kaweco, if you will. Um, now I will say this one is a little muted because it is. it's a great pocket pen. What happened? Well, Drew, funny you should ask because I um, accidentally left this pen in my shorts pocket. Look so at the difference. The grip them. is a little brighter. The uh, the body is a little less bright I because I ran it through the washing machine and the dryer uh, without realizing I had it in my shorts. So. The Lilyfoot is it's about one hundred eighty dollars, which is you know, which is expensive for the for, for the is. size, yeah, the steel yeah. nib because it's the same nib that's on all of the other uh, mm -hmm. Kawakos that we sell. For sure, but you know, the size of this guy, and you get your money's worth. I really do think so. Like, no, I mean, in a way, well, you really people do. like the convenience, like the pocket size <clears throat> of this, and actually, we don't even. It's what's funny because we don't. The, the regular Lilyfoot is about half the price of the Fire Blue. And uh, we seldom get asked about it. So we don't even right. carry that one. We carry the, lily, the fire blue, but not the other regular lily. So I think Monograph is going in the right direction with this. You know, I've called it the spiritual successor to the Copper Mule. Um, <laughs> you know, because it does come with a mug. It's a, named after a drink. Oh, we got to show the mug. Okay, because um, this thing is crazy. So I have the Copper Mule mug. 
which, you know, the, mon the, the Monograppa Mule, which is what's written on it, is a drink that was kind of formulated with Copper Mule, but using um, the, the grappa. Yeah, and yeah. So did this pen used to be that color? Yeah, it was that bright, and it's kind of like darkened over time. Nice. And if I polish it up, it would look like that again. Cool. Um, so it uses grappa, which is a alcohol from Italy. What? In the Monograppa Mule. Yeah. Oh. So Drew, you're not a you're not an alcohol aficionado. No. Like me, I'm, I really don't. Know what I'm <laughs> but um, so they came out with another mug, which is a little different. So I wanted to compare the two, and then we'll talk about the pen too because they. Did I haven't seen this one yet. This is new to me. This is I purposely didn't want Drew to see this one, uh, him, himself live because I wanted to. It comes with a little card that has the I guess the the drink uh, recipe. Ah, look at so, that. There you go. So I can use That's what cool. I have lying around at home. Yeah, one. and the original recipe was created by Eduardo and Leon Miotti for Monograppa and may be tasted by Daniele Bar at Daniele Bar in Bassano del Grappa. So they invented this drink? Boom. Yes. Oh. So that's what they did for the Copper Mule. Um, Wait, they, they didn't invent the the, um, the, the Moscow Mule though. So it was a variation of the Moscow Mule. Oh, it uses, okay. It so, uses Grappa. So they came up, so this bar. Okay, I'm with you now. This bar, they came up <clears> with <throat> a drink specifically okay. for Montegrappa okay. for that pen. And it seems like they've done that. Again, called the Blazer, so. Gotcha. Um, okay, well that's so pretty cool. It gives you the recipe for the drink, which is pretty cool that they came up Let's with. Let's pick this thing up. So here's the mug. Unfortunately, it is not fired like the pen because it would mug would probably cost eight hundred dollars. Is this a mug or a stein, Andy? <laughs> oh, be quiet. Oh, this is <laughs> I've, I've got a, I've got a mug in my office that everybody says is a stein. It's not a stein. It's, it's a mug. It looks very much that, like this, right? Like no, shape, everyone shape. says it looks like a stein, though. Everyone but me. You're gonna have to show this, this oh, mug now, Drew. You'll no. bring it next time. So anyway, it says Blazer by Monograppa. It kind of matches the card that says this. So there's lots of nice little touches here. And you get the mug with the pen, mm -hmm. which is not normal mm -hmm. to get a mug with a pen, but uh, something cool that they're doing. And it's hefty. Like, that's, that's a solid Oh, mug. yeah. This definitely weighs more than the copper mug. Now, it's not made of, a, you know, any type of similar material to this like the, the, like the uh, copper is. It's this like, is, what is this? Pro mug. Probably aluminum, but it's heavy. It doesn't feel... Like, um, like this feels like yeah, it's 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 yeah, like yeah, you can just kind of feel the gravity helping it like there. Sticking in there, sorry, Andy. That's no, what you're almost fine. fits inside. <laughs> but anyway, it's a mug, so I don't know if that's why you would be buying this thing, but uh, it comes with it, so we thought we'd show it. And uh, I want to talk about the pen. Man. Yeah, it is. You know what I I want to mention? I want to mention this nib because I was looking at this yesterday, and I walked in here at the end of the day when Brian was minding his own business, doing <laughs> he did. anything. He came out of his way and because was like, Brian. That nib. Because <laughs> I just realized this is not a gold nib. It's not. But it looks like it is. If you've ever compared a gold or a steel nib, the gold kind of silver slash rhodium plated nibs just have a shine to them that steel normally doesn't have. But this one is ridiculously shiny. It looks like gold. If you put this in front of me and said, is this gold or rhodium plated? I'm sorry, if this is steel or rhodium plated, I would think it was rhodium plated gold. I've never, a seen nice, a, I've never seen I've never seen a steel nib this polished before. And the pattern is cool too. Like Monograppa does a really nice pattern on there. Right. This I've is like the design. This of their is nibs. striking. Um, so the Copper Mule is got like a blackened nib, so it's kind yeah. of different, uh, very different look from that one for sure. But one thing that's a little bit different, and why I want to talk about the nib, is they um, used to use Bach for all of their nibs, mm -hmm. all of their steel nibs at least, uh, and they are switching to Yovo. So that. Uh, the Blazer is now coming with Yovo nibs, right? which I think is good. I'm a fan of Yovo nibs. Obviously, that's what we have is Goulet nibs right. and a lot of brands like Edison, Twisby switched over you know, years yeah, ago. Yeah, this is the same feed that you'll see on some of the Edison pens as well. The feed's slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, the nib, you know, visually, you know, same shape. The, the imprint, I think, is a little bit more striking, in my opinion. Mm, it's very crisp. I very think crisp so. Very crisp imprint. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and, and nothing against Bach. You know, I don't have any problem with Bach, but I've had such great experiences with Yovo nibs, so I'm really excited about the change. Yeah, for sure. So I wanted to ink it up a little bit and write with it, just so we can get kind of a... Oh, boy. I don't want to focus on my Kujaku. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever run into this with... Um, Hiroshizuku inks. I'm like, so I have strong. A hard time, I, I, I have a hard time with any of that. Do you? Would you like to try to open this one right now? No, I feel like you're. Oh, you've my got hands it. are so oily. Go ahead. All right, and give it a shot. Just, just, yeah, let's give it a shot. Oh yeah. See. Well, you know what? Wow, your face turned really red. <laughs> 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 I feel like Did it's going, it? but it's not. Oh my. <laughs> oh. You get it, Drew. See, I just face. needed to scream a little bit. <laughs> 
Thank you for doing that. Know. See, I would see, have done the exact same it was, thing. It was genuinely effortless. I just wanted to I didn't express my breath in a while. Sure. <laughs> struggles to see. I don't want to overshadow. Thank you, Brian. Of you know? course, yeah. Um, so let's ink this thing up. I wanted to kind of compare how it feels. I haven't actually written God, this yet. That's a pretty color. Right? Kujaku is one that like kind of gets overshadowed. Everybody yeah. talks about Kanpeki and Yamabudo and stuff like that. Um, Kujaku, you know, falls among probably like the three or four different, um, you know, blues that uh, Iroshizuku has. So let's see here. This is a fine nib. So I thought maybe we can just kind of ink it up. Drew, I feel like you do it justice. You got nice handwriting and you oh, always yeah. come up with fun please, phrases. Please put me on the spot. Absolutely. I like it. It's very stiff. You know, it's a steel nib, so it's not going to have any, you know, reflexibility to it or anything like that. But uh, let me just get in your way. Here. To me, it feels a little smoother than um, the Bach nib. Oh dang it! This one's inked up already. Okay. That's supposed to say monkey helmet, but kind of messed it up. I'd like to credit my brother for that like struggling noise whenever he's trying to open something that <laughs> usually comes out, and I just go yeah, there. I'm like that. That's that's I'm, I'm channeling that is Chad. Interesting. It, yeah. A little bit of a dribbles here. Did you get a little dribbles. I don't know where that came from. Okay. And one thing I like too, not really to the writing experience at all, but inside the, excuse me, inside the cap, sometimes when you have metal pens, you can get kind of some friction uh, when you're threading it, but they put a plastic insert into the cap. So when you have plastic threads on metal threads, it just feels so good. Like the this way feels it really feels nice. In the caps. The nib, when you run with it. Yeah, it does? it does feel really nice. I mean, it, okay. it's definitely steel, so it's not as, you know, uh, mm -hmm. bouncy as gold would be, but. Yeah. I'm not against that. Yeah, the flow seems smooth. And this paper is not like the smoothest paper. No, it's not. So you're going to um, hear a little bit of action happening. Yeah. Oh boy, let's see. Zuku, Kujaku. This is a long name. I don't use this ink often for notes because the name is so long. Yeah, this is a good looking pen. It really is. It is. The writing experience is good. It's not like. If you're looking into this pen, and believe me, this pen is not for everybody. If you're looking into this pen, it's not like because it's a $450 pen that it's gonna write like, you know, a $450 pen necessarily. You're you're paying a lot for the the aesthetics of the pen. Yeah. Because it's a lot of handwork. They have to flame torch. Yeah, they're like, not using a machine hand torch these things. Um, and that's why we put the video up there that they provided to us. So right. um, I just wanted to show it in person. I really like the way that it writes. It's, it's a great writing pen that has a really cool aesthetic and it's got the drink and all that kind of stuff. So I think it'll appeal to some, not for everybody, but we at least want to show it a little bit here oh, yeah. because it's not your everyday kind of pen. No. So um, it's worth showing. It's very cool. So uh, I got one other thing that I wanted to show today specifically, Drew, because I'm super pumped about this. Yeah, I know you are. Uh, so this is not a pen, but a pen case from Girologio. And uh, we're carrying a number of Girologio products, but this one specifically, I am uh, kind of swooning over. I think you and a lot of uh, pen show goers are gonna find this really exciting. Probably. I so feel like I'm not gonna have enough room to show this. You might not, Andy. <laughs> you might just have to, you know, work with us on this one. Um, so this is a, <laughs> they have, we have a number of pen cases that go from like just a couple of pens, you know, a 10 pen case and, and goes on up from there at 20, 48, uh, 24, 48. It's really kind of rare to see anything over 20, honestly. Mm -hmm. That's true. Especially anything that's like mildly affordable. Yeah. Girologio definitely is. Um, it's it's made in India, so it's uh, that's part of where the affordability comes from, is it's, you know, um, Aston Leather is made in America, labor costs are higher and stuff like that. But the quality of the, these are pretty good, not as good as like Italian, you know, leather and stuff like that, but for the price of what you're getting yeah. is a fantastic I've value. I've been really impressed by these. I have too. So, uh, and this color that they have is oxblood, yeah. which just gets me going. Yeah, I gotta people, say, no, people like, are eating these things up. Yeah, this is a color that I haven't <clears throat> seen before in uh, a leather product for pens, anyway. Um, and it's really, really cool. So this is kind of this like dark and into red. This case specifically, other than the volume, has a lot of really cool features. I think we should showcase. So it's basically like a briefcase, right? But made for pens. So a couple things I want to show is you have handles that slide up here. And they're actually and very comfortable. Carrying. They've got a little bit of extra material right here, so that when you're carrying, yeah, them, it's a little cushion, a little cushion yeah. for your fingers, which is really cool. for your delicate. It's fingers. just it's small. Yeah. It's a small attention See? to detail like, that I think mm -hmm. is worth noting. So I mean, these things aren't cranked out without any you know consideration in mind. Yeah. So I haven't actually filled this thing up with 96 pens, which is what this one holds. You can do that to see the times. weight, but I imagine the cushion would become pretty important at that point. 
um, but it slides down so it's nice and convenient and slides out of the way. A um, couple of cool things about it, um, of course it has two separate zippered pouches so you don't have to open the whole darn thing. Um, and it's got these buttons down here too so that you can actually separate and fold the thing out. Yeah. So for dramatic effect, what I like to do is unzip both sides. <laughs> yep. Here it comes. And I feel then, like you need to stand over here and catch it, Drew. I can't, right? <laughs> exactly. So you can grab the handles and then you can just unfold the entire thing. But wait, there's like more. I'm just going to pull a cardboard insert in there. But then, boom, you can have 96 pens in all their glory displayed like so. And Pretty you, cool. And if you are at a show and you do want to showcase your whole stock, these you guys the come right out. right out. On Velcro, you can take them right out. So there you go. Show all your pens. So if you're playing pens or you want to transport them or whatever, just make sure you wear a handcuff around the briefcase. Presentation <laughs> friendly. Everybody will know that you're pretty serious about your pens and you have this thing. I wouldn't attack anybody that had this many pens. You know they, they have <laughs> enough passion to defend themselves. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, pretty cool, right? So. I just wanted to show this thing off. Uh, I forget the exact price of this one. Do you remember, Drew? It's uh, under 200 I know that. Less than you'd expect. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, to get anything like that holds this many pens for that is pretty phenomenal. And the quality is pretty decent. It really it smells, is. It really is. It smells very leathery. Love it. Are you smell presenting it? this one to my nose? I'm it for smell, yeah. Because <laughs> you're, a, you're a man who appreciates leather smell. I do. Exactly. I so do. that is it for right now today. Hope you've enjoyed that. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed Drew's blazer. I don't know if we'll ever see this thing again. I but thought we were going to talk about it a little bit more. Sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Maybe no, some other time. All we'll right. Have somebody from Banana Book Republic reach out and, and, <laughs> and we'll be willing to sponsor you, you know, to bust out your wardrobe. because yeah, I complained about their quality. They'll reach out to Andy. She was a fan. But anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Right on.